You're listening to The Money Hour with your host, Tina Mitchell, and co-host, Keelan Harvey, on Alternative Talk AM 1150. Now, back to the show with local mortgage experts, Tina Mitchell and Keelan Harvey. Welcome back to The Money Hour with your host, Tina Mitchell. And your co-host, Keelan and Harvey. We are local mortgage experts right here at 1150 AM KKNW. It's a great day to talk about money, especially over the holidays, and that's what we're here for. That's what the show is all about, how to make money, how to save money, how to have a better quality of life for you and your family. If you're hearing our show at a different time or day, you are listening to a rebroadcast, but we're here to answer any questions or connect you with the guests that we have on the show. Please call the show at one 855 Four hundred eleven fifty. Again, that's one eight five five four hundred eleven fifty, or online at themoneyhour.com. In studio right now, we have Amanda Wright and Jen Johnson Cameron of Colder Banker Bain Global Luxury, women leaders in real estate and the myth of life balance. Thank you so much for you for you guys for coming into studio. Thanks, Thanks for so having us. Yeah, it's great to be back. Thank you. Yeah, and it's exciting. We have the two of you for the entire show, so it's just going to kind of be a panel conversation with the the three girls and a guy. Isn't there like a three baby, <laughs> three guys and a baby? Or it's a story of my life. <laughs> like Angela and London, right? Yeah. And a little bit about Amanda first. Amanda Wright, a business graduate of Washington State University. Amanda is a real estate advisor. Role tour and certified negotiation expert with Colder Banker Bain in Bellevue. She works with clients who buy and sell homes on the east side in Seattle, and she specializes in expertly guiding homeowners with big lifestyle change and complex situations. Amanda is an avid learner, traveler, and food lover, and is regularly described as bold and willing to try anything. She has uh, lived here on the east side with her husband and her three-year-old, and she's actually a little bit sick, so if you hear some coughing going on through the show, uh, that's Amanda, (laughs) but I was really happy that she actually made it here to studio. She's not going to get us sick. I can feel it. We also <laughs> have Jen Johnson, Cameron in studio, Colder Banker Bain, Global Luxury Division, as Vice President of Colder Banker Bain, Global Luxury Division, as well as Principal Manager Broker for the new Lincoln Square office. Jen is responsible for leading the vision, brand development, and growth of the Global Luxury Division, as well as Global Luxury Office in Lincoln, Lincoln Square. And I'm just really excited for um, uh, just to see her move up and what she's doing. I've known Jen for a long time, excited to have her in studio. And so congratulations uh, to you, Jen. Thank you. Yeah. Speaking of Jen, you are the vice president of the first division of Coldwell Banker Global Luxury here in the Northwest. Uh, very, very exciting. Tell mm-hmm. us about your path, your story. How'd you get here? Why'd you choose to land at Coldwell Banker? Oh, gosh. Um, You know, having grown up in a family of developers and land advisors and real estate brokers, I really never thought I would take that route. I thought, you know, I might become an actress or a lawyer or something very (laughs) different. Um, I grew up in the back of my father's car sitting on top of his old MLS books while he scrolled through the Thomas Guide. So for all the oldies out there, you'll know what I'm talking about. But, you know, life is a journey, and uh, my background started in mortgage loans and then working for a land title insurance company. And then um, when I found myself married and having babies, I wanted to be a working mom. And so I looked at what my options were, and at the end of the day, real estate really afforded me the opportunity to have a great career, make Mm. a great income, and be there to put my kids to bed most days. You know, attend their school (laughs) events, and when they were sick, I could still be there for them. And um, shortly thereafter, found myself as a single mom, raising two children, one with autism, and enjoyed a long career in sales. And then in 2010, I left the Seattle area briefly, went to New York City to put my daughter, Jordan, into a school for autism. Um, People from all over the world moved to New York City to go to the Rebecca School. It's pretty renowned. Wow and life-changing. So when I moved to New York City, I needed a job. I did not know anybody, but I had this great background in real estate. So I was offered my first kind of position in management. And what I um, found during my four years in New York City was that I had a strength in brand development. And so I worked for several companies 
um, in the New York City area and came back here in 2013 at the end of the year. And recently, just really looking at the landscape, how much we've changed, you know, the industry has changed, what was Mm -hmm. on the horizon. Mm -hmm. I had the opportunity to kind of discern, you know, where do I want to go in in this phase of my career? And um, I had the opportunity to meet with Bill Riss, our owner, and discuss his vision and plan for Coal Banker Bain Global Luxury. And knowing him and, and kind of his reputation in the business and his passion and excitement for where things are going, I just wanted to be a part of that. And so I made this decision to join the team and I uh, haven't looked back. That is so, so awesome. so awesome, Jen. So Jen, I'd love you for you to share with our listeners a little bit more about Colder um, Colder Banker Global Luxury brand and what can clients expect when they come to Global Luxury office and work with one of your brokers? Yeah, so obviously we're a franchise. So mm-hmm. Colwell Banker out of New Jersey is our, you know, global company. We're in um, countries all over the world. But two years ago, they decided to launch a new division. Uh, previously, they had a program called Previews, which is no longer. And they wanted to really adapt to today's luxury consumer mm-hmm. and provide resources to brokers that are serving these clients. And so they launched the Global Luxury Division. Cowell Banker Bain launched um, one of the very first global luxury offices in the Pacific Northwest in the world. Now we're in uh, wow. Spain and all over uh, with global luxury offices. There's um, a specific um, kind of entry into global luxury. The brokers that are a part of the global luxury program go through extensive certification mm-hmm. in luxury marketing. and Which is key. Very key. Yeah. Uh, the the luxury properties require a higher level of marketing prowess, mm-hmm. different resources, a global yeah. reach, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but with Global Luxury, these brokers probably did not start out selling luxury properties. So they've got clients of every property type and price point, and mm-hmm. that's kind of their bread and butter. But it's taken them experience, and the clients are coming to them really expecting that they are that advisor. They're sometimes working, the brokers, I should say, are sometimes working with wealth managers, lawyers, Mm -hmm. expected to be a part of that wealth team. Yes. And the clients might ask something um, out of the box, you know, extraordinary, such as, hey, can you help me find a vendor to move my car collection to Arizona? Or, you know, can you, um, you know, find packers and movers? Or if they're coming in, they need personal chefs and all kinds of things. And so the brokers, when they come into the office, they need to hear from us, well, gosh, maybe that's not something we would normally do, Mm -hmm. but we've got your back and we'll figure it out together. Um, And then from there, they have extensive marketing resources at agency level and pretty much the the wide breadth of all the resources that they need to service those clients. Yeah, and the strategy and everything that you do is going to be completely different with a luxury buyer than it's going to be with, you know, somebody that's not. So, yeah, really important to have that expertise and the connections uh, as well as you were talking about. Yeah, we want to make sure that every single client has that experience, Mm -hmm. the highest level, that we don't ever cheapen that regardless of, let's say, a price point. But that when they come in, that they all receive the same level of service. It's just that maybe their home doesn't fit into Mansion Global because it doesn't hit the three million price point sure. or something like that. Mm-hmm. And your office too. I love that Lincoln Town Center, right? Am I saying that? Or is it Lincoln, Lincoln, Lincoln Square South? Lincoln Square South. That is the coolest mm-hmm. renovation and everything they've done over there. And I got a glimpse of your guys' office, and it is beautiful. Yeah, yeah so it's beautiful. It's fun to bring clients there. You know, it's it's sort of the level that they expect, and sometimes it exceeds the level that they expect. But it's a great well, that space. Well, says a lot to... of it exceeds the level they expect with yeah. the electro luxury clients. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. The food options too, huh? You can't beat it. <laughs> we yeah. call it a problem. Between yes. food hall and ascend at the top of the building, uh-huh. you know, you, you we try have to, to pack walk the lunch. gamut every day. <laughs> yeah. so. Keep your eyes focused on the ground. Yeah. Uh, we're getting a new boot camp next door, and uh, we're pretty thrilled. Well, that's about awesome. That, yeah. that yeah. is awesome. We were at Civility and Unrest just the other. We had a company party yeah. there 
yeah. you're just and that's what a cool little oh. cocktail i mean oh my gosh you have you guys t- been there before no where's that yeah, you can, any cocktail you want you just like tell them uh, kind of what you want them to make like a, a flavor or something and they just make these outrageous cocktails and it feels like you're going into a little secret club that you actually mm-hmm. have to be invited <laughs> behind the doors to get there it's it. like it, it's so cool oh yeah. like a little speakeasy it's a speakeasy uh, yeah, yeah. yeah really wow. cool very Those very cool handmade drinks and uh-huh. all that well, they um, owe you a free drink. That was a pretty good plug. I think so, too. Oh, thank you so much, Jen. Yeah. Well, I left my credit card there. It was still there the next day and my driver's oh. license. So, yeah, we had a lot of fun. Yeah, you know, that's a good night. Uh-huh, it was a good night. Amanda, um, you've been on our show before, and I'm so excited to have you back. I have. Thanks for letting me come back. I must not have screwed up too badly last time. <laughs> you did awesome. No, you were awesome. You were a Brought rock the fresh star. Air. <laughs> yes, and we appreciate you so much. But I, you know, remind our listeners about your path mm. of success, and you know, you've obviously made this change into this luxury, global luxury um, avenue, which is mm-hmm. exciting. Tell us about your success, and how did you get here, and why did you decide to go? down this real estate path. Yeah, so my journey started in the world of hospitality business and um, kind of took me to international development for a few years in the Peace Corps. I was in Botswana um, uh, doing business development with some nonprofits there, among many other things. Um, And I really enjoy and excel in working one-on-one with clients to come up with creative solutions, Mm -hmm. sort of think outside the box, um, solve problems. And I just felt like management, hospitality management, um, was not the way to do that. I wasn't, I wasn't getting that out of my career. So I started searching for a career that fit me a little bit better. Um, and, you know, in my, with my background um, working in Botswana, I learned a lot about managing stress, um, using creative solutions to work through major roadblocks, whether it be cultural, language, um, work, team, teamwork, you name it. Um, so I became really good at looking past sort of the emotional triggers and asking, okay, if we can't do it this way, mm-hmm. how do we make this work? How do we do it? Um, and so I just figured that the best application for these particular skills and, and a way to work one-on-one with people again um, was through real estate. So, and, you know, I think <clears throat> buying and selling real estate, um, for most people, it's your largest asset. And I think it's one of the more stressful events in one's life. Um, oftentimes, mm-hmm. yeah, um, can be up there with kids and getting married and the yeah. whole thing just sort of depends on the situation. So I love that I can come alongside a family or an individual and um, lead them through that stressful time with confidence and care and creativity. And, you know, again, just using all of these skill sets I developed um, to help them reach their end goal. Yeah, I, I love that. And we've got a couple minutes before we uh, take it to break, but I want to ask you, um, you know, what's going on? I want to talk to you about per- professionally when we get back from commercial, but I'd love to hear what's new happening with you uh, personally. Um, yeah, this has been a big year for me. Um, and I, we'll kind of talk about this later, but personal and professional sort of blend together. Okay, well, let's <laughs> talk well a little bit about personal and when professional. When you're a, a businesswoman, but um, a few things, you know, I, I met my threshold goal for selling luxury homes and mm-hmm. Became certified as a, a luxury property specialist, both by Caldwell Banker Bain um, and the Institute for Luxury Home Marketing. So that was exciting. Mm-hmm. I did join the Global Luxury Office um, this fall, and um, I was also named a rising star in real estate by Seattle Magazine and Five Star Professional. Wow. Um, star. Thanks to whoever nominated me, because they don't tell <laughs> awesome. you. So big thanks to uh, my clients out there. So those are a, a few things that made my year really big and, and great. Yeah, and that's great. And that that word is huge because it does come from clients, and they're actually talking with clients that have gone through and worked with you before, mm-hmm. um, and you know, kind of vetting you mm-hmm. know that process yeah, for you and how it went. Process. So congratulations, uh, Grant, congratulations for that. Well, coming up next, the money hour. We're going to stick around with Amanda and with Jen from Coulter Banker Bain Global Luxury, and we're talking about women leaders, which they both are in the real estate space, and the myth of life balance. Right here on eleven fifty AM KKNW. After the short break. You're listening to The Money Hour with your host, Tina Mitchell, and co-host, Keelan Harvey, on Alternative Talk AM 1150. Now, back to the show with local mortgage experts, Tina Mitchell and Keelan Harvey. Here comes Santa Claus, here comes Santa Claus, down Santa Claus Lane. 
Welcome back to The Money Hour with your host, Tina Mitchell. And your co-host, Keelan Harvey. Your local mortgage experts right here at 1150 AM KKNW, the Saturday, December 15th show, obviously working up to the holidays. During the holidays and in the new year, we are here to help you build a strong financial blueprint one week and one show at a time. If you're hearing our show at a different time or day, you are listening to a rebroadcast, but we're here to answer any questions or connect you with a guest that we have on the show today. Please call the show at 1-855-411-50. Again, that's 1-855-411-50 or online at themoneyr.com. In studio right now, we're going to have a continued conversation with Amanda Wright and Jen Johnson Cameron of Colder Banker Bain Global Luxury, Women Leaders in Real Estate and the Myth of Life Balance. So, Amanda, speaking of uh, global luxury, that's the exciting thing here. Tell us a little bit, what exactly is luxury and how can we define that in this real estate market? You know, I think luxury is highly personal. Um, It's not a price point, which is sort of the common conception of that. Um, But it's convenience. It's a really high level of service that meets a demand really promptly. It anticipates that demand. And, you know, in an era where you can order anything from food to a car Mm. on an app and receive it pretty much instantaneously, or at least receive the information instantaneously. Um, We as luxury agents um, really need to rise to that sort of same level of expectation and and meet that demand in the same way. So Mm -hmm. it's being there around the clock. um, It's anticipating needs. It's going, you know, way further than they could expect um, for for what they're asking. Um, In terms of the actual product, um, I think in our time-starved society, that features that um, give time back or uh, shorten a time for, for a client um, are really big uh, in, in homes themselves. So whether it be um, you know a shorter commute time for a client, mm-hmm. um, smart home features, being closer to friends, uh, more opportunities to gather with the people that you love. Um, it's also being closer to nature or views or whatever, you know, really sets your heart on fire. Yeah, um, I love that. The quality of your surroundings, mm-hmm. um, even the history of a home and, and who designed it. So yeah. it's really highly personal to the client. It's not so much about the dollar figure of the um, home, although it can include that as well. Yeah. And well, Oh, go ahead. I was going to say home technology is a uh, really big emerging market and luxury as well. Yeah. yeah. Well, that was an, uh, an interesting and thank you for um, uh, clarifying that because you do think luxury is about price, you know, like that mm-hmm. price point of this and up. So what about the trends that the two of you are kind of expecting and seeing coming up for our, our new year in 2019? Well, I think Amanda touched on smart homes and uh-huh. it's kind of become the norm now where you walk into the garage and the car chargers there and, you know, everything is on an app now from your heating and cooling systems to your sound, to your audio, to your window shades, to being able to set controls for different things, but also building green. I think that mm-hmm. the emerging luxury consumer, the younger younger generation um, that is purchasing luxury homes, they're really looking for building green. Mm -hmm. They've been taught in that generation to kind of reflect on how do I make this a better world, Mm -hmm. you know? Cool. mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'll add, too, in terms of features to the home, um, in addition to smart features, we see a lot of really sort of swanky closets and really functional closets, especially in the master. Yeah. uh, Where you've got like a laundry room inside your closet. Oh, Um, that's cool. Well, I guess my house is not luxury. Gosh, (laughs) Well, these are just, you know, they're trends and, uh-huh. and to each his own, but full guest suites that also uh-huh. include a laundry room. Yeah. Um, wow. So really kind of anticipating the needs of your lifestyle and um, builders are addressing those in different ways today. If I can afford Jimmy Choo's, I definitely want to see them when I walk in my closet. Oh, just yeah. like uh-huh. oh, along yes. with my Gucci. <laughs> oh, okay. yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. You know, to go back, you said something kind of interesting. Time. I was thinking about that. Time mm-hmm. is the one thing, you, the one resource you can't get back mm-hmm. that is so valuable. Mm-hmm. And Tina's course is all mm-hmm. about time. Time is that mm-hmm. commodity that everybody wants more of. Yeah, everyone needs more of it. And so, you know, in, in the real estate market especially, uh, buyers are willing to pay more for things that uh, give them their time back. Yeah. Especially when, you know, the most obvious one is commute time, right? So. Mm-hmm. When you're closer to sort of the urban cores, prices tend to go up a little bit because of demand. But um, it's other things, too. And, yeah, you're absolutely right. You can't get that back. People are willing to pay 
good money yeah, for, <laughs> for their more time. time. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, I say you can't make more time, but you can make more out of the time that you have. And mm-hmm. technology is so in the spirit of one timing with yes. all of the uh, technology coming in. Uh, so, Jen, any other trends that you expect to see in the coming year? You know, I think the connection to the outdoors will continue, especially mm-hmm. here in the mm-hmm. Pacific Northwest. We're so not afforded all year round outdoor mm-hmm. yeah. activities, but, um, you know, nano doors, covered patios, heaters, yeah. sound systems, mm-hmm. fireplaces, fireplaces where you can step out and still feel that you have a larger connection mm-hmm. to the outdoors. I think that um, and mixed materials. I was in a gorgeous uh, property the other day that had. Uh, really unique bamboo cabinets and then concrete counters and layered oh, cool. lighting that wow. just really made you feel that you had the elements of the outdoor in. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. The the modern, um, how long do you think that that's going to that's gonna stick around? Do you feel that we're really going to stay in this modern trend for, you know, I get concerned and wonder, you know, is modern going to be here and then it goes away and then it gets back to traditional and you... Mm -hmm. You mean in architecture or interior design or both? Uh, Both. Yeah, it'll be interesting. I think that contemporary architecture will um, date you to a certain point. You know, no one knows how long it's going to stay around. But I think that, um, you know, 10, 20 years down the road, uh, when you look at that Seattle panel boxed house, Uh you're going to say, oh, that's a house from the 2010. Like the split level. (laughs) Exactly. Yeah. 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 Which, you know, it's very functional. So I think it will be around for quite a while, but I think it will still date you at the same time. Good question, Tina. It's mm-hmm. like the mm-hmm. Mohawk. Well, like that was cool we in 2000. Our, but, we, bought yeah. our home in, uh, we bought our home in Newcastle in 2004, December of 2004. And then the meltdown happened and all of the lots that were still in this, you know, 20 lot cul-de-sac, the builder, they stopped building. Well, mm. then after the crisis, now the homes are all, the lots are getting filled. So you have more traditional houses and then all the new ones that are modern. It's like, mm-hmm. so we've got kind of a mixed um, spirit going on, which mm-hmm. is kind of cool. But so, yeah. Your house is beautiful, by the way, Tina. Thank you very much. Very nice. Very nice. I don't have that laundry room in the closet. <laughs> well, you're going to have to work on Dave on that no one. No kidding. Uh-huh. <laughs> he does the laundry, so it really doesn't matter where the laundry room is. <laughs> <laughs> so, so funny. Love you, honey. <laughs> <laughs> so, Jen, what's something that you're seeing in new development that would surprise some of our listeners? What are you seeing? You know, there's been a lot of talk about how formal living areas are going away, but that's really not what you're seeing with the floor plans. What you're seeing is kind of a modern twist on how those spaces are used. So what would be a traditional living room might be a bar or a parlor or connect to kind of more of a fun room. Um, but I don't think the overall floor plans are just doing away with let's say, a formal dining room, but they're changing the function of that space to how it fits for today's living. Mm-hmm. That, that's cool because a lot of times you feel like you're forced to have a dining room there or you're forced to like mold yeah. to this thing mm-hmm. and it's not useful. Like I have this huge kitchen island and we sit around it all the time and, you know, that's kind of our family space, but mm-hmm. I don't know about sitting down. I don't sit down at a dining room table ever. It's just yeah. we're so fast paced. You thing. should consider another use for the room then. Exactly. Yeah. That's what I'm getting to. That's yeah. pretty awesome. That's, yeah. that's good to know. Yeah. So, Jen, um, so you've had some big news uh, this week when it was announced that the NF- NHL would be coming to Seattle. Yeah. yeah. So for those that do not know what the NHL is, we are getting <laughs> professional <laughs> hockey. Yeah, yeah. So uh, my darling husband uh, played for Notre Dame. His brother, Ian, played for Bowling Green and now coaches professionally. Um, our nephew, Brody, plays. And um, it's Christmas is like who still has their original teeth. Wow. You know, <laughs> you know, who's got the biggest scar, you know, how many can wow. you count? But um, so we're thrilled. We are super excited. And um, I know that who my says, husband already still has, has their tickets. original knees. Is oh, that, yeah. There's like that. One of them? So yeah. far, I think they're doing pretty good. good. <laughs> pretty good. You know, they've so all. So exciting. Yeah. The, most of them still have their hair, too. So. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I don't know if you know that. It's called flow, right? The big hockey hair. Oh. Oh, yeah. that's new. The hockey do. Yeah. Go Google it. Yeah, don't mess with her family. <laughs> Holy smokes. Yeah, no kidding. The they got enforcers <laughs> in there. Yeah. <laughs> so we're excited. You know, I've had a lot of questions. You know, will this really impact the luxury market? How will it impact it? 
But, you know, a lot of um, the professional players that come in town, many of them end up renting. They're not sure if they'll be traded. Frank Clark lives next door door to us. We had Cliff Averill first, and then Frank Clark moved in when when Cliff Ah. got got busted up. Yeah. Yeah. So they, you know, they they need to find a rental. Mm -hmm. The brokers are actually stocking their fridge, setting up, creating lists for them. Um, the players that come in with families, they're more likely to buy and then they want to live close to each other. The mm-hmm. wives have husbands that are gone and kids and it kind of gives them a community and a support system if they have people nearby that understand their lifestyle. Yeah. Jen, I got a question for you. We always get the discussion of technology. I mean, we've been talking a lot about technology in homes and, you know, there's apps for everything. And, you know, do you ever see at some point where an app or technology could replace Brokers? <laughs> mm-hmm. I love that question because it seems the to be the hot the topic. Yeah. You know, there's yeah. always, you know, conversation around technology and the brokers come to me, will I be out of a job in 10 years? But here's what I have mm. to say is technology changes daily. Yep. It evolves. It's not like you create technology and then it never improves or changes. Look at your iPhone, right? But it makes our job um, and that for the consumer better, faster, easier. And that's the benefit of technology and real estate. But what it has really done is it's become confusing to consumers because this age of technology gives them so much conflicting information that Mm -hmm. I think that the value of the broker is even higher because they have to disseminate that information and then analyze it for the client so that they can make good decisions. Also, I can attest to the fact that, you know, it cannot... Technology couldn't determine if the house next door had hoarders or, sure. you know, yeah. a <laughs> unique smell that would affect the price or the value. And it cannot sit with somebody who's a senior and go through and part ways with 50 years of history mm-hmm. and family and all those things that we do to yeah. help someone through that process. So, no, brokers are not going away. Yeah. I think even more so our value, as long as we stay high level, um, is assured. Well, there's no emotion in technology, right? And what we do on our side and your side is extremely emotional. So it's more or less managing the people through the process yeah, good point. and then putting all those pieces together and really just giving them a comfortable experience. And I don't know how you'd get that from an app or technology or an algorithm. It just can't do it. Right? Yeah, right. No, and brokers, you know, once they've been in the business for years, their negotiating skills are sharp. Yeah. That is that is a skill set that improves over time. Mm-hmm. So when you're choosing a broker and they're out there negotiating for you, they're working on your behalf to achieve something. That's that's something that technology could not do for a client. Exactly. Yeah. The, you know, having a person working you through the process is always going to be there. And, you know, I just co- kind of go back. I got into the industry in May of 1995. And, you know, we have conversations with our, our business partners in the real estate space. And I'll just, you know, ask them, remember back in the day when you had those big books, which you were talking about and real estate agents, you actually couldn't get any information about any house. You had no idea what was out on the market unless you had an agent that had that big book and they actually shared that information with you. And then the technology came in and and, you know, agents were concerned about not being here. And then you look, what if technology was not here and which, where would you rather be? And everybody, it's like, that has been made it so much easier so you can provide that higher level of service for your clients. So, yeah. Yeah. Not, I not think going there, anywhere. There's all... a broad range of skills and things that we do as a broker. Uh-huh. Yes. And it, you know, disseminating, disseminating information is just one piece. And yes. that's what technology is pretty good at right now is just getting information to people. But that's one minor thing mm-hmm. in the, you know, the broad scope of what we do. Yeah. So, Amanda, you got into the real estate industry and then you started your family, um, had your had your baby. Mm-hmm. And so how was that um, for you, that timing? And how did that go for you, a brand new mom just starting your career in real estate? Yeah, I had my daughter about eight months into my career. So it was within my first year, which made it very challenging. Mm -hmm. Um, Every time you have to stop in your business um, and start again, it's sort of like starting new again. So um, that part was certainly very challenging. Um, it's, it's, It's very difficult on many ways, but at the same time, I don't know any other industry where I could be successful, um, doing the job that I love and also raising my family. So, yeah. it, you know, part of the difficulty is that um, I want to be there for my clients around the clock 24-7, but I also want to be f- there for my family for mm-hmm. the same amount of time. And so you have to um, juggle, you have to set expectations uh-huh. and balance your time as as best as you can. 
Um, and really, you know, setting up those expectations for your clients on when you're available and when you're not. Most people respect that, I found. So, um, you know, that's that's what's great about being in this industry as a mom, but certainly does not go without its challenges. Yeah. And I always say, I mean, you need to set your boundaries and your clients, for the mm-hmm. most part, you think that people think clients want and expect more than they do. Mm-hmm. And so no good client is going to expect you not to be able to be a mom and be a spouse. And mm-hmm. so, yeah. yeah. Well, coming up next in the Money Hour, we're going to wrap it up and stay here with Amanda Ann Jen from Colder Banker Bain, Global Luxury, Women Leaders in Real Estate, and the Myth of Life Balance right here at 1150 AM KKNW after this short break. You're listening to The Money Hour with your host, Tina Mitchell, and co-host, Keelan Harvey, on Alternative Talk AM 1150. Now, back to the show with local mortgage experts, Tina Mitchell and Keelan Harvey. You know Dasher and Dancer and Prancer and Vixen, Comet and Cupid and Donner and Blitzen, but do you recall the most famous reindeer of all? Rudolph the Red Nose Welcome Reindeer. Welcome back to the Money Hour with your host, Tina Had Mitchell. And your co host, Keenan Hardy. We are local mortgage experts right here at 1150 AM, KKNW, the Saturday, December 15th show. Bring in each week the best of the best experts the in the local market, everything on money and how it's going to affect your money. If you're hearing your sh- our show at a different time or day, you are listening to rebroadcast. But to connect with the guests that we have or ask any questions, please call the show at 1 855 400 1150. Again, that's 1 855 400 1150 or online at themoneyr.com. That's a little reindeer. I know. Music. You, yeah, I saw him. He cruised right by the window. <laughs> so awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, okay, that just took me off guard. Okay. Threw her off. I can't believe I looked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did too. <laughs> yeah. I did too. <laughs> that there is he so is. Awesome. Santa. <laughs> I know him. <laughs> yeah, so we have so much. Uh, we have so much fun here on the uh, Money Hour. <clears throat> now in studio, continuing our conversation with Amanda Wright and Jen Johnson, Cameron of Colder Banker Bain Global Luxury. Uh, we're talking about women leaders in real estate and the myth of life balance. So Amanda, you left off as uh, being a new mom in your career, and um, I got to give you a shout out to that because the best thing that ever happened to me was being a dad. Um, But there's a Mm -hmm. lot of challenges, as we both know, Mm -hmm. in being a mom and taking that career on. If you can get through that, you could do anything. I'm Mm -hmm. pretty sure about that. Yeah, I feel the same way. You kind of feel like a superwoman or a superman in your case. Yeah, you you don't even know what's coming at you you and you just deal with it, you know? (laughs) I mean, for both of us, we're business owners, right? We we run our own business Mm -hmm. and... and, um, Business owners have to work hard and long hours and do all kinds of things to keep the business going. And um, you, you've you got to find a way to make everything sort of work in your life. And like I said before, I don't know any other industry where I could actually successfully do that. So when it's, you know, I always tell my clients, I'm here for you all the time around mm-hmm. the clock. But between the hours of 5 and 8 p.m., you will not be able to get me by phone unless mm-hmm. you text me because I am... Um, I'm putting my kid to bed or getting dinner ready. We're doing the whole thing. And I'm not going to miss that with my kid. And and people tend to respect that. Of and at course. first, you know, when I was a new mom, I didn't think that they would. I felt really bad about setting that boundary. Mm. Um, and then once I actually started practicing it, it was very easy. And, and everyone they, re- they respect you as a business professional more when you don't, you know, you're not available 24 seven, but you I have agree. your boundaries. Cause if you don't have your yeah. boundaries in life, then you can't really be enjoying life, which mm-hmm. means you can't be enjoying your career, which right. means you can't be, be miserable. excellent at mm-hmm. it. Exactly. Yeah. And who yeah. says, Hey, don't be a good mom. I mean, really? Yeah. Right. So you're doing the right thing with your kids. So yeah. absolutely. Well, well, considering, why don't let's talk a little bit about your uh, your switch to the. You've been with Coldwell Banker Bain for five years, mm-hmm. and then you made this new switch to the Global Luxury Office in Lincoln Square. And what prompted that move and taking that next level of your business? Well, I think it's just that you know I've been with Coldwell Banker for five years, and my business was developing and growing to the point where I was just sort of ready for the next level. Um, in addition to that, the luxury market in Seattle has been growing and developing at the mm-hmm. same time. So um, I really wanted to be in a place where um, I could both hone my skills and have all of the excellent resources that our company offers um, for clients at that level. And, you know, like we've mentioned, Jen's mentioned before, it's 
um, no matter what type of house or price point you're in, um, you're going to get that same excellent service and, and detail and attention from us. Um, and, you know, to be fair, I would say that regardless of what office you're in in Coldwell Banker Bain, you're going to get great attention and care from any sure. of our agents. But, um, you know, for me as well, being a young mother um, working through my career, um, I wanted to be around other top producing women who also have families and just to be around them and learn from them, mm-hmm. um, kind of get mentorship from them. So there's a lot of really fabulous agents in that office. And, hey, I'm just glad they let me in. <laughs> <laughs> we feel very fortunate to have Amanda. Part of the cool kids. She's uh, definitely yeah. our people. But there's kind of a joke that um, every time I walk in the kitchen, there's Amanda. And she snacks, <laughs> snacks, she snacks, she snacks, snacks. What is she doing and, in the kitchen? I don't know, but she's sprouting a couple of pounds out front, Amanda. Amanda, is there something going on? If oh, this, if this was any other time of the year, I would be so offended. But <laughs> no, so another little new development this year. I'm actually um, cooking child number two in the oven wow. as we speak. So, oh my gosh, um, congratulations! Baby number two on the way, coming next May. Um, yeah, so wow. this whole um, you know career, family, huh. um, uh, trying to balance the two and trying to make sense of the two is about to get more intense for well, me. But no, but how exciting because you know those commercials where they show for the first mom what it looks like and or the first child for the mom what it looks like and then she has her second child and what it looks like and I think it's going to be like that with your career. You know that you don't have to be yeah. with, at your the beck and call for your clients but you can have that balance of a career p- providing a high level of service to your clients and being a great mother and so um, you know, exciting. Yeah, yeah. You could just strap your baby with you and take them to a show, you know, right? People really, a lot of people really I like would that. Love it kind of depends on the love... client, but a lot of people really, really do like that. So, yeah, yeah I'm going to work that baby for all it's worth, <laughs> exactly. right? Exactly. <laughs> Bring out the cuteness factor. <laughs> no, and you know, we talk about so, the term is work life balance, but um, you know, it's, I'm not sure balance is the best word for that. Um, I, I think that you have to do what you have to do during any given moment or any yeah. given day, right? Like it's, it, it, I will always feel guilty about not giving my clients enough. Mm-hmm. And at the same time, I will always feel guilty about not giving my family enough. Hmm. Um, because there's really no way to give everything to everyone. Um, you have to just sort of take it a moment at a time and a day at a time. And it's sort of this give and take. And um, in the end, if you're setting up the right expectations, I think everyone can kind of roll with it and, yeah. and can understand and, and it works. But you know, like you mentioned, if you're not happy in your career, yeah. it's not, you're not going to be good at it. Yeah. And so well, and I think you can, you can focus on all of the great things that you are for your family and you can focus on all the great things you are for your client. And, you know, then it's because really it's like everything else there, there is that, um, that balance Attention. sides and where your, yeah, where your tension is, uh, where it's at. So, yeah. Yeah. And another reason why I love this company and um, the office I'm in is the, um, the, the people. It's a great network um, and support system of people. Um, Jen and I talked a lot about, you know, what will it look like mm-hmm. in this coming year when I do take time off and, and then when I'm trying to sort out having two kids and a career. Um, what will it look like? How will there be support for me and my clients? Yeah. And it's it's there. It exists. It makes me feel very confident. That's one of the reasons why I moved over. Um, whether it's other agents in my office helping out mm-hmm. or the staff picking up um, some of the activities I need to do. And everyone is, um, it's very much a, a team sport in our company, yeah. which I absolutely love. So, well, and you know, it, it is, you know, for, uh, for us as well. I mean, I leave on vacation sometimes and my, you know, my clients have no idea that mm-hmm. I'm out of town and, you know, the team just steps in and, and does what they need to do. And so I'm, you know, it's great to have that, that backing, um, and when, I mean, and credit to that, when you have that level of service and what you do, you're good at what you do, right? At the end of the day, you're a great mom and you're a great uh, agent. So <laughs> mm-hmm. when you deliver, it's all about that expectation. I think that's a great, uh, great word that you use, expectation, and yeah, having people really understand, point. right? Because if everybody's on the same page, you just deliver. That's yeah. it. Right? Yeah, that's true. I think the worst expectations are the ones that we put on ourselves. Mm-hmm. It, totally yeah. Amanda, Absolutely. it totally is. She is where I was in my career when I got started. Now my children are 20 and 22, so I feel very old saying that. <laughs> but, you know, the idea that 
there's balance is a myth, especially mm-hmm. if you're going to choose something like real estate. But the trade-offs are what's so beautiful about it, that you do have that flexibility mm-hmm. to create your yeah. own business the way you want to. But I don't feel that women have to pick and choose. Mm-mm. You know, if you want to stay home and raise your children, do it. If you want to have a career and not have children, do it. Some people find themselves as a single mom having to work mm-hmm. when they never plan mm-hmm. to. Yeah. But the idea is that you're able to get to the point where you can live your best life. And that means giving yourself a lot of grace because yes. mm-hmm. there are times, like Amanda said, where you feel like you're not giving your child enough. But today's society says, be a great mom, be a strong leader at work, mm-hmm. yeah. go home, make an incredible meal and be a sex kitten mm-hmm. later for your husband <laughs> or your partner, right? Yeah. And you probably have to go, okay, there's got to be a flow here. And sometimes yeah. I'm going to go towards the greatest need and sometimes mm-hmm. I'm going to swing back. And if you allow yourself the ability to live your life like that with grace, not putting that expectation on yourself that you have to be all things at all times, Mm -hmm. then you'll kind of pick it out when you need to and and move to the next thing. Yeah. Well, and I I like Amanda, how you said one day is going to be this and another another day day is this. And I think like anything else in in business, you know, I talk a lot about uh, time blocking where a lot of entrepreneurs Mm -hmm. um, feel that time blocking is not possible. But I always bring back in too, if you look at the 80-20 rule, 80% are not getting 20% of the result or 80% are getting 20% of the results, Mm -hmm. which means there's only 20% that are even doing a small amount of what you ultimately would want to do. A one percentile, the best of the best 99% of them are not that. So um, be cautious of who you're listening to your perspective from. So time blocking is possible and it's critically important in any business, whether you're a sole entrepreneur or not. And so it's the same when you're a mother, you're just time blocking in those Mm -hmm. things when you have uh, your kids' sports games, you're time blocking that. And then when the kids are in school, this is the time that you're working and it can all flow. You know, Absolutely. Really efficiently. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Time blocking is something that I started doing this year uh-huh. as sort of an experiment to see, can this be better for myself? Yes. Can, you know, this this tension between family and work life actually work? And so I started in small ways. You know, I don't time block every single hour of my uh-huh. day, but there are certain things that I do every single morning. And there are certain things I do every single week. Yes. Um, and, and my time is blocked out for that. Sometimes I can multitask, but I, it, that's not truly time blocking. So I'm really trying to kick that habit. Um, but anyway, you know, I've seen some great developments in my business this mm-hmm. year. And yeah. I have to attribute it to that. You know? I love that because I, I so true. Yeah. So we started this conversation with uh, how real estate is such a great industry for women in general and how that works. And we've kind of touched on some of these things. Can you guys elaborate on that a little bit more? Absolutely. Um, You know, there's a Harvard study. I'd have to quote it, but I can't, but I saw it once. (laughs) It talked about women in real estate and why this was a field that we could excel in. And it talked about how good we are at extracting information. Hello. And that, that yeah, <laughs> and that, that makes us really great negotiators. Huh. Oh, if yeah. you look at uh, Manhattan, for example, you know, the heads of all the large firms are women. Yeah. And it's a place where I think in the past has really been kind of the good old boys club. And you're starting to see that even in our own company where Barb Hindle recently moved up to one of our top executives for the company. And I think that, the skills that women possess, uh, Mm -hmm. compassion, leading with heart and soul, Mm -hmm. also having the ability to multitask at a high level really play into what helps us to excel in real estate. Um, I do feel that we have a sense of responsibility as women in leadership to really be great mentors by young to younger women in that generation that are looking at social media and seeing like you're supposed to be all things to all people and it looks so beautiful and perfect. That's not reality because Mm -hmm. we all have stories and struggles. And Mm -hmm. the more we share those, the more that we can start to connect with these young women as they rise up. Well, I, I got to uh, I got to give a shout out. Actually, speaking of, my mom is the vice president of Edison Forty Seven yeah. Property Management. So uh, yeah. I was brought up by a strong businesswoman, and I would mm-hmm. have to say I attribute a lot of my success to following her as a woman in a in a very man driven environment. She had to work mm-hmm. very hard. You know, mm-hmm. she's 
I won't say how old she is now, but, um, you know, that was a stereotype back then. And it was an extra layer for her. And to see her go through that uh, mm-hmm. inspired me for sure. Yeah. That's great Way to have to you here for mom. Girl Power um, uh, mm-hmm. Show Today. Power Hour. And you <laughs> like, some girl you're stuff like in there. right in there. <laughs> I better shut up. Yeah, so awesome. Well, we're um, we're out of time. I You know, we should just have a, an entire show about um, girl power and women power in, in careers. I do want to say in the financial arena, outside of mortgages, but financial advice. That's one area that it seems like they're lacking some of that Mm -hmm. uh, strong women uh, power like we have here, but another show. Well, thank you both of you for uh, coming back in. Jen, first time on the show. Amanda, thank you for coming back and excited to have uh, both of you back again. Thank you very much. This is a lot of fun. Have a happy holiday. Yes. And this is your host, Tina Mitchell. And your co-host, Keelan Harvey. Signing off for the day as the holiday seasons approach. May your home be filled with joy, love, and tons of laughter. We'll be here next week, same time, same place, right here at 1150 AM, KKNW. Have a great weekend.